<laughs> we tend to crave hearty food at this time of year. Stuff that warms and gives us a fat store to call upon when times get tough. However, in modern society, tough has to be self-inflicted with a Zumba class or Tums and Bums session. For wood pigeons, it's a different story. They really do need to pile it on and this maze is like a bread and butter pudding buffet. The far side of the field, there's been a lot of pigeons and crows on it. The farmers asked me to shoot it. Today they say we can get, we're going to get a lot of rain and access to it is like getting over the fence here and walking right across. It's, it's so wet everywhere, so it's a, a big walk. We've got another maize field which he cut probably 10 days ago. That's going into wheat as soon as we get a dry spell, which looking at the weather, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. So we're going to go and shoot that today. But what we're hoping to do is have them coming across, make him for here, and just flight them. We'll try and decoy them, but most of the pigeons we're going to shoot today are going to be flighted. And I think it's going to be fun in this 25, 30 mile an hour winds. This is a new permission, I don't want to lose it. So. Um, if it's a case of standing out here and getting wet today, and uh, that's the way it goes. Are you all right there in this wind, David? Breezy. It's, it's, it's <laughs> a bit breezy. <laughs> that's why I want to get the other side of the wood out of the wind. To be clear, Andy will be one of four guns on the harvested crop to protect the standing crop behind us. Joining Crow today is Frederick Hanna. He's more of a rifle shot and is keen to take some of Andy's know-how back to Germany, where they don't really have a strong culture of pigeon shooting. And he starts by building a hide big enough for the tall German. Yeah, we're going to have to have a big one today. You've got big Germans in there. Well, now I'm going to need some stilts. <laughs> the old hide's going to have to be so high <laughs> so they can't see Frederick. Either oh, that or he's going to have to kneel down. So, Frederick, how much pigeon shooting have you done? Um, not an awful lot, to be fair. No. I, mean, I, I said to David earlier the, the best day ever we had in Germany was 26 pigeons and that is something like probably all the hunting areas in the vicinity of 50 kilometers spoke about. How much pigeon shooting is done in Germany? Is it, is it seen as a, as a sort of mainstream sport? Um, it depends a bit where you are in northern Germany definitely. So there you get the, the migration and so on as well in the winter. So they, they, they do shoot big bags up there. Um, where I am close to Frankfurt we are very much a, a forested area more than anything else. So. At home it's really deer and deer and boar for me, but northern Germany definitely, they're, they're on it. When do they migrate through? Um, so the big migration they always get is like January, February. So um, that, that time of year is usually when they have like these pigeon days and right. usually the, the hunting ground owners will invite the, 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 the new hunters of, of the year yeah. and so on. So everybody gets a chance and then there's probably 20, 30 people out to shoot two or 300 pigeons. That, oh, that, right. is, that, is, that, that is happening. But right. like, not like you guys, that when you go out and sometimes you have these crazy bags with one or two blinds, that, yeah. that just doesn't happen. So yeah. 26 birds is your, your biggest bag so far? That's, that's our absolute record and that was two of us actually in the, in the same blind. So um, well, I'm, I'm very, very curious about today and see what, what's, what's going to happen. I, I think some people are slightly confident, so um, I'll just, just see what happens. <laughs> I'm, I'm really thrilled. I know I'm really, really excited to learn all about it and, and see, it, see it being done. Sticking a couple of roaches out, that's all we're going to do. Middle of the hides there, just want to try, the wind's coming over our right shoulder. So the plan is to start to come around in front and come pull, pull to the road tree. Uh, that's the plan anyway. I've got no... many decoys, bro? No, I haven't got any today because we're going to be flighting mainly anyway. So it's just a case of trying to draw them to where you are. Once we get a few out there, hopefully they, they might start looking at the decoys. And then uh, Frederick can take over there. When finished, Andy's hide is as impressive as King Ludwig's castle and blends in a lot better. Although Frederick says in Germany they would never put a hide so close to a wood, especially when shooting corvids. Back home we always say when we're decoying crows that yeah, yeah. we shouldn't do it next to the edge of the forest because the birds will be scared of, of predators such as foxes or, or stoats or, or something. Yeah, yeah. Is that nothing you ever worry about? No, I've never worried about it. No, no I do quite a lot more. Most of my crow decoy shooting is along the edge of a wood, um, around farmyards and that, but... Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I'll give that a go at home then yeah. and see if it makes any difference. Yeah. Frederick has not come empty-handed. He has rustled up a fallow venison meatloaf, just like Granny's. What is this, Frederick? So it's fallow deer meatloaf. Grandma's recipe. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we need to have a bit of grub during during the day. 
I, I think we'll be in the in the hide for quite some time. So, uh, so go on, how need, do you make need, it? Um, it's, it's just really plain plain recipe: Pe pepper, salt, uh, minced meat, a couple of eggs, onion, parsley. Um, that, that's it really, and then just bake it. Awesome. Do you reckon you got your ears in properly today? I definitely got my ears in properly today because you put them in for me, David. Much appreciated. When it's do you just, reckon is the best tasting pigeon? And when's the sort of plumpest, juiciest, healthiest when, pigeons to eat? When they've been on maize. Definitely. Seriously? 100%. Yeah. Get them on maize for three weeks. So the ones I take home later will be absolutely bob on. Yeah. They should be. We've got to shoot some first. Crow thinks he knows what will happen today, but the conditions are so changeable he is prepared to manage the situation the best he can. The pattern is small because he thinks most of the birds will be shot en route to the fields behind. He is only expecting to pull some back if they can fight the wind. Yeah, of course, they have too much wind. They, they mark up their more and they want to come and there's just one big gust and it just lifts them. It's just they're not managing to punch across the field. They do, I'm not saying. They're not all making it, but quite a few of them are making it. Not with my uh, mustard. Yeah, quite a oh, Hold on a second, hold on. Look at that bad boy. Okay. And there you go without Mr. Crow. Cheers, Frederick. Can we invite him again, Crow? Because we don't eat like this, do we? No, we can't. We're good. It is good, isn't it? Mmm. Mm. Seems every time we start on food, pigeons start coming. Where are you going to put it? I don't know. After all that, it's a stock gun. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you put it? That's what I want to know. I'll put it in my pouch. <laughs> Where? It's in my pouch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't, did he? <laughs> oh, for God's sake. The Jack Pike pouch, it's got cartridges in one bit and food in the other, see? Thankfully, a second pouch saves the game bore clear pigeon shells from getting covered in grandma's loaf. Of course, both shooters are using blazers, although Frederick is using the Heritage. Regardless of what it looks like, he thinks the F-16 range is a great one. So explain what makes the Heritage a Heritage then. The, the, the Heritage, well, it's, uh, it's, it's really the ultimate game gun for the UK, I would say. <laughs> Side plated, nice game scene on there. Just a, a really, really pretty and just beautiful F-16 really and um, I mean the great thing about it is German made, German engineering, it works, it's a dream to shoot and um, I really think the balance on all of our shotgun, that, that's what I always feel coming from um, or coming into the industry or before I worked for Blaser, the, um, the balance on both the F3 and F-16 I always find it's so much easier to shoot them than other shotguns so uh, just give it a try. When the rain starts to fall, Crow says we'll give it another half hour or so. He has time to check and see what the birds have been eating. This one's got three or four grains of maize. The deeper you go in his crop, the more maize he's got. This puts the, that's probably what he ate this morning. Um, but they, these are, see these are still milk, milky, They're, well, semi-milky. Um, they probably picked them up on the field behind us where they've been feeding. And the other seeds that are in there um, are buckwheat. Um, they're like a triangle seed, um, but yeah, so he's probably got that out of a pheasant cover crop somewhere. Um, yeah, as you dig in there, you find more and more maize, all little grains, like off that field over the back, I bet that's where they've been. Um, they've just gone there and just settled in there, there must be a pheasant shoot over there, they, not that I know of, but unless they've got a wild bird mix over there, but yeah, that's what that is. So what sort of day has Frederick had? Absolutely love it, it's super good fun. Uh -huh. Uh -huh just so different to whatever we do at home so it's uh, just really nice to always see what what different people do in different countries and I think it's the same passion but it's still so interesting and, and fascinating to, to do things you don't do at home or you don't get to do so often so I mean back home it's all bow and deer and uh, here I get to do something I don't get to do at all so love it absolutely love it. As Andy plans to get home for a duck flight this evening we start tidying up. It's been a tough day with some challenging birds. Nothing daunted, this is a new bit of ground for Andy and he needs to show the farmer he means business. 